I'm John Robinson, and this is my fellow traveler, Erifnus Katenop. Together, we've racked up 280,000 miles, covering every mile of every road on Missouri's highway map. Along the way, we've seen nature's hidden gems that you won't want to pass by. So climb in for the ride. We're finding wild Missouri. Shannon County is the heart of the Ozark country. Forest land in every direction, a hunter's paradise and a fisherman's dream with wild springs and rivers waiting for you to ride. If you're gonna tackle this wild country, a good place to start is right here. Twin Pines Conservation Education Center, just off Highway 19, outside Winona. In addition to all of the exhibits inside that tell a little bit about the history. We have a, a fishing lake. We have outdoor exhibits, including historic logging equipment, an 1840 cabin, a 1910 schoolhouse, nearly three miles of trail with wildlife and demonstration plots, native plantings. Uh, there's a lot to do, and we'll give you the tools and the, the stuff that you need to go out and explore. Missouri's Southern Ozarks is a patchwork of public and privately managed lands and some great stories about saving the land, like Peck Ranch. If you were to come in, you will notice that you'll actually be on the valley, which is Road 1. This 19,000 acre preserve attracts wild turkey and the call of the wild. Those are bull elk you hear. The elk have been around for a few years now. This is the first time wild elk have inhabited the Ozarks in 150 years. Uh, with the Missouri Department of Conservation, we've really strived to get the habitat back that early settlers would have seen and also the wildlife that they would have seen as they had crossed Missouri. The Ozark Trail goes right through here, winding its way past the 11 Point River, through the Irish wilderness, and on down toward Arkansas. Because of the Swiss cheese-like topography of the Ozarks, there are springs and sinkholes everywhere. This sinkhole is called Devil's Well, a tiny opening that opens up into a cavern the size of a soccer field. It's a short hike to Rocky Falls with my buddy Alan Peters, who knows a lot about this area. Alan calls this one of the seven wonders of Shannon County. Well, we're looking at some of the oldest exposed rocks in the Midwest right here, John. Yeah, this is pretty amazing. They're a billion and a half years old from what I understand and still going strong. It makes for a unique setting with the, the falls and the swimming hole and, and uh, a great getaway too. And uh, one of the seven wonders of Shannon County. Absolutely. Would you like to go see some springs? Oh man, I'd love to see some springs. Let's go. We're heading up river toward Alley Spring on the Jack's Fork. Yeah, and the uh, spring's up there. Some say this mill may be the most photographed spot in Missouri. Almost a century ago, people took the train here from the city to hunt, and to fish, and to stay in the magnificent lodges along the Merrimack River. The passenger trains are gone, but the hunting and fishing are still here. So are some of the lodges. Like this old beauty, Wildwood Springs Lodge. Like we did back when we were all fired up. We're still fired up. 
The Wildwood Living Room concerts are legendary. Tonight's band, Poco. We caught up with Poco's steel player, Rusty Young, and his wife, Mary. They spend a lot of time in these Ozark Hills. You know, we get to travel the world, we, and we travel America a lot. We get to see lots of great and beautiful places across this country. But there's something special about this place here that, uh, that we really love. Where our cabin is, we can go down, I can go down this road and there's this one fishing spot I love to go to and there was this big one that always got away. And uh, my brother-in-law, who's a, a champion fisherman from Colorado, w came down to visit and uh, darn, if he, he didn't caught. throw it in there and he caught this, this Pictures. big smallmouth, it was, the, it was the big one that was in that pond. It was, it was great that he caught it and it made me feel really good that he had such a great time, yeah. you know, a Colorado fisherman. Coming, coming and catching uh, fish at our place. The Merrimack River Basin is one of the oldest and most diverse ecosystems in North America. How diverse? In this river, there are more species of crayfish than just about anywhere else on Earth. There are delights throughout this region like Merrimack Caverns, where the James Gang hid and divided up the loot. It's one of the most famous show caves in the cave state of Missouri, which boasts more than 6,000 caves. Back above ground, we're getting a bird's eye view of the Merrimack River. Here we go. The caveman zipline is not for the faint of heart. All right, good job, buddy. Hey. Upriver, Merrimack Springs is a true success story. After decades of clear cutting, mining, and firing these huge iron smelters, this whole area has been restored. Lucy James made sure of it. She was a descendant of the ironworks owner, and she established the James Foundation, which keeps this private park open to the public. And here's where the Department of Conservation operates a trout hatchery, right here in the park. It's a great example of public-private partnership, offering some of the best trout fishing in Missouri. We have a long-standing relationship with them since 1958, and we've been stocking rainbow trout ever since. This is one of the five cold water hatcheries the department maintains. So come on down to the Merrimack. Take a look at this spring. Have fun floating and fishing and listen to some good music. Next stop, we're going to the wild west of Missouri. We're gonna follow some trails of the infamous James Gang. No relation to Miss Lucy here. See you on the other side of the state. The Donner Party's ill-fated journey west on the Oregon Trail began right here in Independence. Eryphnis and I try not to get lost, and we easily found our way to the National Frontier Trails Museum, a fascinating peek into America's pioneer past. This is the perfect place for a museum that focuses on the three great trails, Oregon, California, and Santa Fe, because all three of those trails actually either started here in Independence or came through Independence. So here at the museum, we talk about the jumping off experience how pioneers prepared their wagon trains, purchased their supplies, acquired their animals and trained them and so forth. And then we recount their experiences on the trail between Independent and the West Coast. Just outside the museum, you can see swales, the wagon ruts still visible from the Great Trails West, made at a time when this area was on the edge of wilderness. Closer to downtown Kansas City are swales of a different nature. These swales absorb water runoff from the parking lot at the Anita B. Gorman Discovery Center. This is one place where Lewis and Clark's core of discovery comes alive even after 200 years. Nature here takes a front row seat. The outdoor garden is not the only thing green at the Discovery Center. 
So is this entire building. Alternative energy sources and eco-friendly materials shape this place inside and out. The building is one of the first green buildings here in Kansas City. It predates LEED certification. Uh, we use a variety of renewable resources, um, architectural elements that were in pre-existing Kansas City buildings. We also have passive and active solar components, geothermal, and the living machine that not only adds beauty to the building, but allows us to reutilize the water in the building as well. There's more wild in the heart of the city at Maplewoods Natural Area in Gladstone. It's an island of natural beauty next to strip malls and neighborhoods. This area has the largest remaining stand of virgin maple trees west of the Mississippi, and the walking trails are great. Just east of here in Liberty is the Martha Lafitte Thompson Nature Sanctuary, where you can enjoy peaceful surroundings. For the adventurers on two wheels, the biking trails at Rush Creek next door are worth exploring. We're smack dab in the middle of Jesse James country. This is where Frank and Jesse grew up. The county owns the property and it's open to the public. There's a museum on the farm with many family heirlooms, like Jesse's horse saddle and shotgun, even his boots. Just down the road, travel back in time to Watkins Woolen Mill. It's the only 19th century textile mill with the original equipment still intact. Did I mention it's surrounded by a beautiful state park too, with more than 3,000 acres for hiking, camping, and picnics. And all these great things are just minutes from downtown Kansas City where you can enjoy great outdoors and great barbecue too. Missouri is a great place to explore and find outdoor adventures. From backwoods places to wide open spaces, you can travel by car, by boat, or on foot and discover nature with family and friends. For more ideas, visit MissouriConservation.org.